the construction crews are working day and night at Universal's newest theme park, Universal Epic Universe, to meet the opening goal Universal has next year in 2025. Several areas of the park have seen a significant amount of visual progress since the last time we visited two weeks ago. These areas include the Forest Around Minecart Madness, the Q entrance to Curse of the Werewolf beginning to take shape, and the turrets of Peach's Castle finally installed. All of this and more on this week's Universal Epic Universe Construction Update with our aerial views provided to us as always by BioReconstruct. From an overall project perspective, Epic Universe will be completed in phases with the first phase's opening being the two off-site resorts of Stella Nova and Terra Luna. Both resorts have opening dates in January and February of 2025, respectively. The majority of the visual progress was found at Stella Nova around the resort's pool area. The pool itself and hot tub has seen being painted bright blue in preparation of being filled for the first time. The striped concrete continues to be poured, making its way away from the pool. The pool at Stella Nova is not the only pool with progress being made this week. At the back of Epic Universe is the Helios Grand Hotel, where out front in the pool area, new trees have been planted near the cabanas between the pool and the hotel tower. The inner dome of the pool bar roof has been completed, while work on the outer dome continues on the ground nearby. High above the pool area on the roof of the hotel, the bronze roofing tiles continue to make their way towards the peak of the main dome. Between the hotel and Epic Universe sits the statue of Helios, where a bow and arrow has been added to his hands along with scaffolding being added around the statue. Several of the rock formations we saw in progress being sculpted two weeks ago near Helios have since been completed and are ready for paint. Additional small trees have been planted throughout this entire area around the walkways, at the top end of the main show fountain. Grass has also been planted as well between the walkways where these trees have recently been planted. Inside of the viewing area of the main show fountain, AstroTurf has been installed in one of the viewing sections. Nearby, at Meteor Astro Pub, the brickwork on the building has made its way all the way around to the north end of the building. The colorful concrete around Astronomica has had additional progress made since fully being uncovered. Next door, more dense foam is being placed along the berm of the central water feature, which is the home of Constellation Carousel. Making its way above the carousel dome, a scaffolding staircase has been erected to allow roof access from the outside. The scaffolding does allow the internal ride platform to spin freely. This does suggest that Constellation Carousel is the newest ride to begin ride testing at Epic Universe. Just outside of the exit to Constellation Carousel is the Oak and Star Tavern, where the newest colorful concrete courtyard has been revealed. Sitting in the shadows of Oak and Star, are the two kiosks where metal roofing has made tremendous progress. Celestiki Bar is nearby as well, which has seen progress with its own colorful concrete. Across Celestial Park at Stardust Racers, a star-shaped concrete wall has been formed at the front of the coaster. This shape is identical to the one found in front of the entrance tunnel to the coaster building. The cascading waterfalls at the front of Celestial Park have begun to be painted bright blue, similar to the water features around Celestial Park. Just to the side of these cascading waterfalls is the Phase 2 dining location, which will open at a later date after the opening of Epic Universe. At this location, new wall studs are being installed between the structural beams in preparation for exterior walls to be installed. Just behind this location sits the faraway land of How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke, where the details of this land continues to explode. 
inside of the playground of Viking Training Camp, several new detailed frame sections have been installed on the upper levels of the playset. Additional canvas coverings have been installed high above, with the blue and yellow covering being the location of the bathrooms in this area of the land. Hiding behind Viking Training Camp is the second launch of Hiccup's Winged Gliders, where we can now see two dragons hiding among the eggs inside of the scene. On the shores of the lagoon outside of Viking Training Camp, several additional small trees have been planted as the landscaping continues to be developed. Additional dragon houses have been installed throughout the village. Theming of one of the retail shops continues with log walls being sculpted along with dragon head theming along the roof line. The two large statues that guard the entrance to Mead Hall have now been painted and weathered to match the exterior of Mead Hall. At the entrance to Hiccup's Wing Gliders, several areas of theming look to be ready for paint, including the two smaller statues here. Inside of the queue for the Lands Coaster, new landscaping has been planted in the gaps of the pathway that lead to the load station. Toothless has also been uncovered again, and we now have our best view of this lovable dragon to this date. The queue of Dragon Racers Rally has seen a lot of steel beams installed since we last flew above. These beams look as though the entire queue will be covered. We can also see some wooden posts have been placed near one of the rides to act as what can only be assumed as ride fencing. On the opposite side of the land, at Spitfire Grill, a new dragon head has been installed above the sign for the grill. The first arch to the outdoor seating area of the land has also begun to be themed. Down below, in the lagoon of Fire Drill, the lagoon is filled with water once again and all of the boats have returned. This whole area looks very busy and congested, but still looks fantastic. Several additional characters have been added since the last time out, including the other twin in another barrel boat ready to fire back at guests on the ride. Neighboring Burke is the new wizarding world of Harry Potter, Ministry of Magic, based in the streets of Paris where, unlike most updates, we have quite a few visual changes to go over. Before even entering Paris, at the top of the replica arch, we can start to see lettering being scribed into the arch facade. Inside of the entry courtyard, light poles are being installed along the walkways. Just outside of the entry courtyard, we can see the phoenix on the ground being prepared to be lifted into place. This phoenix will be installed on the back side of the arch overlooking the streets as seen in the model in the preview center. Several of the storefronts in the land have had signage installed above their entrances. Separate from the main area of this land is the courtyard which looks like a separate part of Paris which is only accessible by three alleys, which two of which are clearly visible. At the Five Street intersection, the central street has been revealed, acting as a hill to give depth to the land, which will lead up to the turrets high above the land. These turrets are still being worked on behind the land, on the ground waiting to be installed on the frames high above. At the theater show in the land, additional pieces of red tent are being installed to connect the three main sections. We can also see extra framing starting to be installed along the edges of the tents. At the exit to the show, we can see trees have been planted on the sidewalks. Below the Butterbeer billboard, the scaffolding has been removed along these building facades. Moving down towards the entrance to the Battle of the Ministry ride, which is the feature ride of the land, Several streetlights have been installed along the sidewalks, making their way towards the 5th Street intersection. The awning above the entry for this ride has also begun to be constructed, with the steel framing now installed. Directly across Celestial Park sits the land based on Universal Monsters, Dark Universe, where several small details have been unveiled in this update. 
the gravestones behind the entry portal that guests walked by before entering Darkmoor have been painted and weathered. Lots of landscaping is being planted in this area, which can be seen by the two large carts with plants on them. Inside of Darkmoor, the protective coverings over the walkways have been removed, leaving all of the coverings being removed from the entire land. Dark Universe is now the only land to have the walkways inside of the land completed and completely exposed. The well at the center of Darkmoor has seen some of the vertical framing installed. Inside of the village, we have also had our next door sign spotting above the retail location inside of Darkmoor. Just outside of Darkmoor, inside of the Dark Forest, sits the land's spinning coaster of Curse of the Werewolf, where the queue entrance is now visible with a traditional universal entrance look we are used to seeing. Nearby, we can also see the information board where the ride rules along with the wait time will be shown has been installed. Above the coaster tracks, where a tent will stretch above, additional framing has been installed in preparation for the tent top. Walking towards Burning Blades Tavern, a new wagon has been placed along the walkway which is carrying a coffin. At Burning Blades, the small landscaping that has been recently planted has really made this location look as though it is nestled on a terraced hill. Walking away from Burning Blades towards Frankenstein's Manor, a turret can be seen on the ground staged to be lifted into place on the manor. The tallest peak on the manor has also been recently installed. We can really see the progress of this peak from a recent ground view picture. As we move from the darkest land at Epic Universe to the most colorful, along with the last land of today's update, Super Nintendo World as always gives us a lot to go over. Above the entrance portal to the land, the colored pipe theming has begun to be installed. Guests enter the land through Peach's Castle, which has recently had its turrets installed, with one being painted. The stairs in front of her castle have begun to be sculpted with stone theming as well. Working around the upper level of the land, a very large piranha plant is staged on the ground near the Goomba rolling activity. I cannot place where this large plant may be installed, but if you have an idea, I would love to hear it, so be sure to leave a comment below with what you think. Another piranha plant has been installed inside of a standalone foundation closer to the Bowser Jr. area. On top of Toadstool Cafe, the metal framing for the mushroom cap has been installed on the cylinder concrete structure that has been bare for quite some time. Nearby on Mount Beanpole, several additional characters have been installed along Yoshi's adventure ride path. Light poles have also begun to be installed as well along the ride path. Behind the Mushroom Kingdom sits the mini land of Donkey Kong Country. The crashed airplane of Funky's flying by gift shop has started to have its awnings installed. The second layer of walls are now being installed at the Bubbly Barrel snack stand. Behind the Bubbly Barrel is the splash section of the coaster which has started to be painted. The entrance arch for the queue of Minecart Madness is now visible, with several formed pieces seen nearby waiting to be installed. Throughout the entire coaster path, more bamboo has been planted, which has really given the whole coaster area a dense forested look. At the base of the lift hill, we can also see that Dixie Kong has made her appearance. As we wrap up the progress being made inside of the park, let's quickly see what's going on at the park entrance. The colorful courtyard in front of the Kronos Tower is starting to come to life as it gets closer to the tower. Inside of the Kronos Tower, we can see work being done on some sort of pipes before the concrete flooring is poured. All of the turrets on top of the entrance support buildings have also been covered up for some reason. Lastly. The colorful concrete between the entrance gardens and the security plaza looks to be completed and looks absolutely amazing. 
This wraps up this week's Universal Epic Universe Construction Update. What pieces of progress do you think is the most exciting? Be sure to let us know below in the comments. Thanks again to BioReconstruct for the continued aerial views of the park. If you enjoyed this update, please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe so you do not miss the next Universal Epic Universe Construction Update. Until next time, travelers, have a great one.